All right, uh, thank you so much for staying with us and welcome back to the program. We really do appreciate your company so far. So good. And uh, right now we take our interviews to another level, talking about matters happening in our country and to be specific on our roads this morning. This week has been a very different week for Kenya as uh, the crackdown has been fully implemented. Yesterday it was not business as usual for all the Matatu owners who had not complied with the road safety rules as uh, following a statement that would was issued by the government last month and that deadline that was slated for 12th November 2018 that day was yesterday people thought you know we could get uh, you know some sort of sympathy it could be postponed and pushed forward a lot of time maybe it would be added time to comply but yesterday nothing was uh, the, the police was were not reluctant on this particular matter and we saw all the people that were, had not complied including the staff that are working in this PSVs were uh, taken action was taken against them and commuters had a very long day trying to get to their different destinations as we had very few vehicles on the roads yesterday and today we want to talk about the status of what is happening in our country and what is going on and what we should expect going forward in the coming week and whether this crackdown is going to be sustained and how we seek to bring sanity in our public transport sector with this particular directive. So joining me to have this conversation this morning is none other than the police spokesperson, uh, Charles Owino. Thank you so much for joining me this morning. And uh, very quickly, I'd like to know, first of all, uh, where we are at today. Yesterday compared to today, uh, share with us a bit of, uh, you know, what went down yesterday and a report that you can give us as we speak this morning on the status we have with regards to the follow-up of that particular crackdown. It's okay, thank you so much. Uh, at least today we've seen more vehicles, mm -hmm. more PSV vehicles on the road as compared to yesterday. Uh, because yesterday the vehicle owners had threatened to withdraw mm -hmm. their vehicles from the road. And uh, to us, I think it was pretty good news uh, because our major problem has been management of PSB vehicles and the cartels on the road. Mm -hmm. So we were waiting that uh, if you are going to withdraw your vehicle from the road and it's going to save uh, lives and going to create more comfort for Kenyans, then the better. Mm -hmm. uh, you are aware that we have so many people who would want to invest in uh, the PSV industry, but they can't invest because of the kind of disorder that is, there. Uh, that is there in the management of, uh, of PSV. There's no order completely. And I think uh, it's high time because uh, uh, the implementation of some, these regulations have been in place. Mm -hmm. uh, what is most important is enforcement of these regulations. And somebody would ask, uh, many a time people would ask, why now? Uh, this thing requires a collective responsibility from the persons who are using the roads to uh, the owners of the vehicles, the drivers, the conductors. Mm -hmm. Because, for example, if a vehicle is meant to carry three per seat and the vehicle is a 14-seater, why should you, as the 15th person, get into this vehicle? And there are other vehicles which are going to come. It interferes with your, with your comfort. Why should you get into a vehicle which has no speed governor? And you can see it's going at a very high speed. All right. And then it kills you or it maims you. So it's a collective responsibility, responsibility for all of us and a feeling that we need to have order in our rules. Because one of the major reasons why we even have a lot of uh, jam in town mm -hmm. is because many personal uh, owners of vehicles, drivers, come in with their cars into the city because the PSVs are not comfortable. Mm -hmm. But if they were comfortable, you would not want to come with your car to yeah. town. And that would you would leave it at home. Yeah. You would save on your fuel. You would save on your maintenance cost. Mm -hmm. And uh, also uh, save on uh, parking fees. Yeah, yes. that reminds me of the ongoing project to f the BRT project that is, uh, you know, currently underway, but we'll not talk about that today. Mm -hmm. Let me get back to the why, um, you, the why, the question that people have been asking, the why now? Because I understand that these road safety rules have been there for, from time immemorial. These are basic offenses like carrying an, uh, passengers in excess, you know, like not using your safety belt. These are things that have been there and the law has been very clear. So why was this crackdown? necessary like we have to crack this whip right now was there something you, that inspired you remember decision? the day before yesterday yes when we were just to start you saw nairobi mps coming out in arms and most of them saying that yeah, uh, yeah. it should be postponed it 
You see, th that is the kind of culture that we have. Mm -hmm. uh, politicians coming to interfere with programs that are supposed to uh, be carried out. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when, when, when they interfere and they manage to, they manage to uh, convince a certain kind of people, then you find some of these standards going down. But it should be um, a kind of a unity as a nation. We need to come up and say, no, this is how we are supposed to carry out our day-to-day -day business, mm -hmm. so that we are safe on our on our on our roads. We use vehicles that are roadworthy. We have drivers that are well trained, uh, drivers that uh, have uh, all the papers that you can be sure of your 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 safety. We we have a system that is working because. Kwanza, the owners of motor vehicles suffer a lot. Mm -hmm. The persons who have bought these vehicles suffer a lot. Because when they carry excess, that money does not go to the owner. It goes to uh, the driver and the conductor mm -hmm. and uh, the other numbers on the road. Uh, when you overspeed and uh, the vehicle maybe uh, gets an accident and is damaged, the, the cost the goes owner. back to the owner. Yeah. When people die, like for example, when we had the Kericho case and the people are in excess, yeah. insurance is not going to pay. It goes, it boils back to the owner. So the owners of PSV suffer a lot. And then ourselves, the users of um, our PSV, we equally suffer. So it should be uh, a common understanding that as a, as, as a country, we need to agree that this kind of practice cannot happen mm -hmm. and, and 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 we agree as a team and say no this cannot happen and we support like yesterday many Kenyans persevered a number of them walked and that is the kind of patriotism that we expect yeah. out of each and every person but when they decide to circumvent you and then you start crying and then you start calling upon government uh, to hold and to stop then for how long are we going to do that mm -hmm. yes now if the law has been there and uh, we have offenses on this other side in between i'm looking at people who are supposed to be assisting us in enforcing this law where did we miss the point were the mishuki rules at some point suspended or what no, happened? why are we the question is the question like it's not been the law has not been there. no the question is that uh, traffic police officers have always arrested people on daily yeah. basis mm -hmm. and taken them to court it's not that the law has been suspended but that unison agreement acceptance by all of you including yourself yeah that you are not going to get into. Because I would ask you, at what point did people start getting into 14, uh, uh, in on, on a, th a three and seat? Using and using Yes, and then putting on, uh, deciding to be four or five. Why, why would you get into that kind of a vehicle? You see, we cannot have policemen seated on the back of each and every person. That you, if we have a policeman behind a driver, we tell you, don't overtake on the brawl of a hill. Don't overtake in a corner. It can't happen. Mm -hmm. We, we must be persons that uh, are, are, are disciplined. We have inherent discipline. We know this is wrong. You are not supposed to. For example, along thicker highway today, yeah. we lose people almost daily, people that are uh, hit by vehicles. Mm -hmm. Reason, somebody has avoided to use a flyover, yeah. and he's jumping across uh, the, the, the boundaries that have been put, mm -hmm. and you are hit. So you would be asking people, would we have a policeman at every point to, to stop you from crossing the road? Mm -hmm. It's personal discipline, and uh, it must be agreed. So it's better, there are many countries, uh, even in Africa, mm -hmm. where you don't even see a policeman uh, along the road, you know, because uh, there are traffic lights that are working, and uh, people are obedient, mm -hmm. they respect but the law. But, but how do we get to that space, sir? Because in our country, there are people who uh, complain that our laws are more reactive as opposed to being proactive. Our, our, the population has not been empowered to understand what the law says. N no, 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 it's, it's basic. What we are very punitive. No, like no, when, no. when we have increased number of road carnages, me. that's when we see a lot of crackdowns. And a my lot of my question is, when, we, when, we, when, we, when there's a flyover on the yeah. road mm -hmm. and you refuse to use that flyover, are you supposed to be taught that? It's common sense. Unless you stop using your, it's just discipline. Mm -hmm. And that is why it has been agreed by the state, by the government, and uh, more so the CS in charge of uh, security, that if people cannot take personal discipline, then we have to push you and force you to do those things. Mm -hmm. The only thing that matters is consistency. And that's why I say, 
that if 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 you've been uh, uh, if you've been in this country for a very long time, yeah. you know uh, several factors that cause this. Because you see, the moment we allow people to because the laws exist, yeah. when the laws exist and people become disobedient, it promotes corruption between the police and the users. They take advantage. And the person who suffers most is you, member of the public, who is supposed to use that, uh, that, that PSV and be comfortable, and the owner of the vehicle, who also suffers consequences of uh, bad habits on the roads. I've told you issues of insurance. Uh, and that is why we would want, uh, probably, going forward, to ensure that um, uh, drivers take personal responsibility of insurance, nothing like third party. Mm -hmm. But if you cause the accident as a driver, then you take responsibility to an extent that you'd, you'd lose your, 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 your license, your license mm -hmm. and you'd be followed for liability so that you become responsible when you sit on that seat, knowing that not that you will sit on that seat, cause an accident, jump to another vehicle, no. But what I'm saying is, you are still fairly young. I'm sure you have small babies. Mm -hmm. It starts Soon with it, it's a, it starts <laughs> with you. <laughs> Are you getting me? Yeah. It will start once you get your children. It yeah. starts with you. Mm -hmm. How do you bring them up? What do you tell them? Yeah. You know, for okay. example, uh, we are in a country where people don't respect the police, yeah. and many people would not want their children to be police officers because they think it's a less-paying job, uh, it's an inferior job, and yet you want quality in terms of you are security. Mm -hmm. And I always challenge people that there's nothing, your economy cannot grow without a strong security system. Mm -hmm. And that is why when you are lucky to have a CS, uh, like uh, Dr. Matiangi, mm -hmm. who is passionate about his work, uh, you have a PS who is passionate, you have uh, top police officers who are passionate in what they are doing, then as a community, as a society, you should take advantage of that of opportunity, that opportunity mm -hmm. to make sure that what has been lacking is done. You, you now don't cry about the past. Mm -hmm. We look at what is Where happening now. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, I always take it very positively uh, that I've, I've always said that if my CS was able to stop cheating and insist that if you get, if the highest gets 55%, then nobody in that year will get even a B minus, mm -hmm. the highest will get a C plus. Mm -hmm. It's a normal standard. Mm -hmm. If we could manage to do that, we this is something that is sector. open. Yes. So it will be upon us, the police now, to ensure that we enforce that. But there's a lot of temptation where there's a lot of money. We still know that there'll be temptations with the drivers and users of the road to bribe the police. Mm -hmm. And there will be policemen who are weak enough that would still want to pick the bribe. And that is why we have strengthened our internal affairs unit for your information. Mm -hmm. We have moved the internal affairs unit from Jogo House and taken it to a private building. Mm -hmm. We've taken it to um, KCB Plaza in mm -hmm. Upper Hill. So it's a purely private place. You will not see policemen. You just walk in, put in your complaint. The, the, Aris, the Aris system, the automatic reporting information system? Yes, that is also there. Okay. Uh, but equally, the internal affairs unit, which deals with complaints, is now totally out of a police building. It's at the KCB Plaza. And the CS and the IG has worked very hard to ensure that that is done. Because many people may not get it easy to access the police building. But now it is a, a completely private place, the same way you can go to Kenya Power mm -hmm. or the same way you can go to any other institution for okay. a service, okay. the same way you will go. So we have strengthened our I IAU, uh, we have strengthened our Independent Police Oversight Authority, and uh, we are working closely with EACC and the Criminal Investigations Department so that we follow up our colleagues who may be tempted to get involved in this and mm -hmm. take stand action against them. And I'm sure uh, within days or a few weeks, we'll see policemen either getting sacked or okay. going to court. Okay. So this is a serious issue. Okay. And we need your support. We need the support of the public. Mm -hmm. Because you have surrendered all your powers to us. To you. Yes. And, and b I, I, b I believe it would also be important before the end of this conversation to talk about uh, the ARIS system that was launched uh, last Friday, yes. if, I'm, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I have de uh, uh, details about that I'll be sharing in the, the course of uh, this particular program. So that as a common monainchi, you now have the power and the responsibility. Wherever you are on the roads, if you see something that is off, 
then you can be able to anonymously report that and action will be taken. We'll be sharing those details with you as we have this conversation with Charles Owino. But when we see this happening and there is no motivation to move in a smooth direction from all stakeholders, does it speak of lack of consultation probably from the side of uh, the interior uh, ministry, the transport ministry, the NTSA and the owners of the Matatu, they issued a strike a threat yesterday, they wanted to strike. And why is this happening if all along there, there has been talks of having this crackdown? Does it mean that one part is working on their own and another part is working on their own? No, it's Has just, there it been is, consultation? It is just a sign of impunity. Yeah. For a law to be made, there is a process of making law. These laws were made long time, they were passed in parliament, and they were assented were to. Were they involved? Do they no, what I'm saying, any law in this country, uh -huh. there is a procedure of making law. And uh, there is a lot of public participation when you want to make law. So all these laws were passed long time ago. They were not passed today, you talk about 15 years. Mm -hmm. So these are laws in existence. You don't need to, uh, we don't need, you, don't, you did not need police to come back to the public mm -hmm. or go back to Matatu owners and tell them that it is wrong to carry excess passengers. It is wrong not to have a seatbelt in your car. I think that would be, that is, that is part of impunity mm -hmm. and uh, somebody would be running away from reality. We don't need to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And the CS gave a notice and said, we are giving you this period mm -hmm. so that you can be able to conform mm -hmm. if you had not conformed. Complied, yeah. Which I think, I, think, I think that was goodwill uh, when they were given that opportunity. But what I've said, we are very firm. They said they were going to strike. And I told you it was good news. It's Why good was news. It good news? Because it's for good me news. I feel like it's it was good. punishing no, no, the no. commuter no, no, who no. is innocent in let this me, particular scenario. Let me tell scenario. you, I've always said, uh -huh. I've slightly bigger body. Uh -huh. And for me to cut this weight and become even smaller, yes. there's a lot of pain. I have that to exercise, <laughs> I have to cut what I'm eating. Yeah. There is no gain, I've always said that, mm -hmm. without pain. Even our mothers went through pain to yeah. get us mm -hmm. as their children. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that uh, the commuters did well because they persevered. Uh, they never complained. I saw most commuters saying, no, let the Matatus or the PSV vehicles comply. Mm -hmm. It does not apply only to PSV vehicles. Even, even uh, uh, personal cars, even taxi cabs, even lorries will have to comply on regulations that are required. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is that I'm saying it is good news because if these Matatu owners or uh, the kind of crop of persons we have tomorrow, yesterday would have said they are not bringing their vehicles back on to the road, yeah. Mm -hmm. then I know we would have had other Kenyans would with different culture <laughs> who would want to invest. And that is why we said that if you don't bring your car to the road because you have not complied, because you don't have money to put seatbelts and that's well and good. Mm -hmm. But if you say you are withdrawing your vehicle, you don't have an absolute right over the license from NTSA. Mm -hmm. NTSA would simply withdraw and the give license. It to somebody else. And but not only withdraw yeah. the license, mm -hmm. even blacklist the vehicle. You know, you can jump, but the only way we can, be, be, we can be able to move forward as a country is to remain firm. So it's not a joke. It's, it's a serious issue. And, 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 and uh, uh, you know what we say in Luo, that it's not mchezo wa watoto. You know, <laughs> if you put it in mother tongue, it, like it sounds even better. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. So it's mchezo wa watoto. Mm -hmm. This is a serious issue. We yeah. have said it is no, it's no people must comply. And we'll rain on everyone. We'll run starting from our own, the police. Mm -hmm. You joke around, we deal with you. We go to the passengers, we go to uh, the other persons. So it's not a joke. People must comply. comply. But then and and, 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 and no more threat can move us. How, how, how do we make this, uh, you know, something that is long term? Because we've had crackdowns like this before, especially when we have increased numbers of road carnages. We've had, you know, efforts geared towards improving the Matatu culture in our country before. This is not the first. No, but you've seen, happening. you've seen what Why has. Why are we back in the same position? What are some of the? You know, you'd say, you'd say we are back yeah. if we are not, if we are not continuing with our work. Yeah. I've just want to assure you that this process will be continuous. So what's different? Until, this, until, this until, yeah. it's goodwill. As police, we work purely on goodwill. Mm -hmm. You are goodwill as 
as, as, as a private person mm -hmm. using PSV yeah. is very important to me. How do you behave? You get into a vehicle, you find it full, you say no, you go. So number one, if you have that goodwill, then you will help me as a policeman to make my work easy. If you are supposed to, uh, there's a flyover, you don't, you, don't, you don't just cross the road, use the flyover. You make my work easy. If you are a Matatu owner, ensure that your, your Matatu has a speed governor, ensure that it has seat belts, ensure that uh, it meets the requirements that, uh, the standards that are required. You make my work easier, easier that as I a agree. policeman. So That's the goodwill starts with you. Mm -hmm. Now, the other one comes to me okay. to deal with the rogue person who do not want to <laughs> comply. And mm -hmm. that's why I've said we are starting with our own, the policemen, that they must ensure that there's compliance. Mm -hmm. And that is why those officers who would go taking bribes mm -hmm. on the roads mm -hmm. and uh, would, go, would, en would not be doing their work have to be dealt with. They mm -hmm. have to lose their jobs and they have to go to court to ensure that each and every person is up to speed on what is required. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. I'm looking at uh, the details of uh, the ARI system because now you've talked about rogue police officers and I want to share this information. I was, I attended uh, the meeting that uh, the Interior CS had uh, last week. Uh, that was the Interior CS, the IG uh, Joseph Boynet, and of course uh, the, 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 the CS uh, from the Ministry of Transport, James Masharia. They met top police commanders in this particular country from regions and counties uh, at the Kenya School of Government last Friday. And uh, one of the things that were given as directives going forward on how to sustain this particular crackdown was the implementation of the anonymous reporting and information system. Now this is for you, Mwanainchi, that in case you see something off on the roads and you need to report it to somebody you do not have to identify yourself they gave uh, numbers that you can be able to communicate uh, with the police uh, through if you want to make a call directly this should be 0800 721 230 0800 721 230 and uh, an sms you can send it to 40 683 that's 4683 or use the ussd code of uh, star 683 hash star 683 hash go to their website that is iau.go.ke in case you want to use that that means or you can physically visit the internal affairs unit uh, of the police and uh, just make your complaints uh, directly in case you want to do that so that was something that was launched last friday and um it's in an effort to make this crackdown different and more sustaining going forward and even involve you as Mwananchi because the most of the time you get intimidated and you do not know how to report cases that you see, including corruption that happens on our road. So that is the ARIS, ARIS that was launched last Friday. So as we continue having this con conversation, uh, sir, probably it will also be important to understand uh, what are some of the things that uh, have happened so far uh, that uh, aside from the police, what you've done as reforms in your own uh, space, if you look at what has been done to the commuters, the people who are uh, the staff at the public service uh, vehicles, are there anything that has been done in terms of even them being empowered to understand that this crackdown is no joke like you are sharing with us? Um, I think they are quite informed mm -hmm. of uh, what is required of them and it's not, uh, it's, it's not something that has just happened from nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, the government came up with the uh, NTSA, National Transport uh, Safety Authority, uh, which is supposed to come up with policies that we use in management of uh, road safety. And they have a lot of programs mm -hmm. for drivers, for conductors, and they have a lot of campaigns on road, on road safety. Equally in um, uh, the police department, the traffic department, the commandant uh, traffic has now a lot of space to undertake uh, safety programs mm -hmm. because you know we moved the the the, res the management of the traffic bases from the commandant traffic because the, uh, initially officers all over the country in traffic were reporting directly to the commandant yes. traffic mm -hmm. now these officers are reporting to their respective OCSs OSPDs and county commanders mm -hmm. so they are managed within the county within the sub county and within the ward, the, the officers are managed easily. Now, the commandant in charge of traffic has remained with um, uh, matters to do with highway patrol 
and uh, road safety majorly. So mm -hmm. he has a lot of time and opportunity to come up with uh, education and campaign. So right. as we continue with enforcement and crackdown, uh, the NTSA continues with coming up with uh, developing more policies to manage road safety. They also come up with campaign programs and they work hand in hand with the commandant of uh, the traffic department uh, to ensure that there are several campaigns, teachings, uh, going around informing people on issues to do with road safety. Mm -hmm. So we are not only carrying not out... Punitive, no, we are not... Say, we are not also doing something yes, but uh, the, level at the, the, le the level that we have reached in this country, the punitive aspect will have to at least bring people down mm -hmm. to live impunity. Uh, you can only manage impunity by becoming very tough and becoming to a larger extent punitive on bad actions, mm -hmm. bad behavior. And then when people come back to normality and they are able to do their things in the right way, then you become uh, a slightly less punitive. But nobody is interested in punishing anyone. Mm -hmm. We are looking generally at the safety, the order of our roads. And I think everyone... Uh, is a winner in this case. Mm -hmm. Owners of Matatus and PSVs will have less accidents. Um, uh, they'll have, uh, they'll, they'll make more money mm -hmm. uh, because they'll be, they'll be order, they'll be more happier, uh, they'll be doing much better. Mm -hmm. And even the passengers will be more comfortable in these vehicles. They'll, they'll get value for, for, for their money. So yeah. I think it is a win-win situation and uh, let everyone uh, support this process so that it becomes easier for us to implement. Yeah. If this, if what happened yesterday and today, a better part of today morning continues, I think it's something that will make many Kenyans happy. There's no question of if. <laughs> there, there is no question of if. If it is sustained. It must, it must be sustained. It must be sustained. It must happen. There's right. no shortcut. In fact, if there's anybody sitting somewhere thinking that the way it happened they in 2006, 2007, <laughs> it will come back. Yeah, I'm sorry, it will not come back. Case. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If I g if I can hold you responsible to that, then I'll, I'm happy as a Kenyan. I have. Uh, <laughs> I, you have that duty <laughs> to hold me responsible for that. For that. I am happy as a yes. Kenyan to hear that coming from you, the enforcers yes. of this particular law. But then again, um, last week still, the the the, the, the CS of in the Transport Ministry, James Masharia, talked about expanding the chain of arrest. That it's not just the road users that are going to be arrested in this particular crackdown that they're mm -hmm. going to go further than that, looking even at the driving schools and, and the insurance companies and the circles. T talk to me about also what is happening in that uh, aspect. Are you going to those places? Or <coughs> yes, we, we, we are going to all those places. Uh -huh. uh, What's happening? Especially if you look at the circles, there was a purpose of having circles because these circles were supposed to manage uh, vehicles. And, and we not only go to circles, we will even go to NTSA. Mm -hmm. For example, you find that a circle has, let's say, 30, 40 vehicles. Tomorrow, you find that somebody is starting a new circle. Then you go to the portal. Somebody has removed vehicles from one circle. Maybe they have now remained five and transferred to another circle to enable registration of mm -hmm. the circle. Mm -hmm. If you get deep into it, Mm -hmm. you find that the person registering the circle does not own a single vehicle. Mm -hmm. You're getting mm -hmm. me. So those kind of actions must stop so that we have circles that are properly managed that belong to owners of vehicles. So currently I would I want to see a situation mm -hmm. when I go to Machakos bus stop. Yes. I don't want to see those thoughts carrying uh, mama's bags and snatching them things and putting them into buses. You mm -hmm. can be put into a bus and you wait for 10 hours before it leaves for up country. Mm -hmm. We want to see a situation where you go to the bus station and you find uh, if it is Eldoret Express, they have an office. Mm -hmm. If it is Nairobi bus, it has an office. Mm -hmm. If it is Nyaugenya bus from my place, it has an office. If it is uh, uh, Easy Coach, for, for good Easy Coach has an office. Mm -hmm. So that when you come, you walk into the bus station, you choose the, the particular you want bus company you mm -hmm. want. Mm -hmm. But if I can still go to Machakos bus stop and hear people shouting, then I'll have to ask the officer who is in charge of that area, who are these people shouting? Mm -hmm. And why are they still here? 
he will have to take responsibility for, for that. What is happening. So, so the circles, we must rain on them. So currently, as we speak, has, are there any arrests that has, have been made? Yes, yesterday regard? alone the we circles, arrested. The no, yes, insurance companies. No, yesterday alone we arrested 3,704 people. Okay. And I'm sure they are appearing, some may have, may have appeared in court yesterday, some are appearing in court today, mm -hmm. and we are continuing to arrest. So the issues of dealing with, for example, circles is, is, is more detailed, mm -hmm. and it will go beyond uh, just traffic police. It may involve the DCI coming in to investigate, to establish who are the actual owners of these circles. So that those circles which are not properly registered or uh, I have people who do not even own matatus, then they get deregistered so that we get proper, we get proper circles. So that would happen. Insurance companies, um, it depends on uh, uh, several uh, factors mm -hmm. and regulations of insurance mm -hmm. if they are done appropriately. But what we are thinking about is maybe trying to convince uh, the system and uh, coming up with a law where drivers would take responsibility not third-party insurance, mm -hmm. so that this driver becomes responsible. You know I'm a driver. I rely on this license to feed my family and feed myself. Mm -hmm. I must secure my license. And for that reason, I must drive in a responsible manner. No responsible if, if an accident happens, maybe an accident, purely an accident, but not caused by unnecessary uh, human error, All right. that you are driving when you are drunk. Mm -hmm. that and, and let me tell you, it goes even beyond uh, even PSVs, even you you remember our issues of alcohol law, yeah. that you, you, you drink, then you drive. Mm -hmm. Nobody stops you from drinking. Go and drink. But if you drink, either call someone to come and pick you or take an Uber mm -hmm. or whatever, or a taxi. A designated driver. A driver, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but when you drink, let me also look at okay. then when you drink and then you drive, then you cause an accident, it's not fair. Mm -hmm. We are losing so many um, people who are very active, uh, who are very productive, that we ought not to lose. Okay. People are getting maimed. You are aware of uh, special wards for uh, motorbike yeah, riders. The casual, yeah, casual. All over. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's not a joke. It's it's a serious issue, and it goes just beyond seeing us on the road. All right. It will go beyond that, and uh, we have to make this enforcement. Uh, much more real and, and accurate. All right. Yeah. Let me look, look also into the aspect of some, some public service operators have complained that, yes, we want to comply with these particular uh, rules, but it's not in our hands. We do not control this industry. We do not control this sector. There are so many dynamics at play. We have the Kamageras, one of the uh, things that are, has been raised. People that are in charge of the stages and the estates and everything. And we have each and every person wanting a slice of this particular cake. So that at the end of the day, as the owner of the vehicle, I may not have a say. I may want to my vehicle to really adhere with these particular rules, but I do not have a say. There are so many people the that are involved. Owners, and, yeah. The owners of the vehicle have a big say. Mm -hmm. And that is why they must ensure that they run the circles themselves. But if I don't play a game, I will not be the, in the business. The, the, so the, question, the question is, if you want to run a matatu, then you should run a matatu. Mm-hmm. You cannot run a matatu and again uh, be a farmer and again be a policeman or be a teacher. Mm -hmm. I think those who want to do PSV should concentrate full, and do full-time full -time PSV mm -hmm. so that you become, not that you buy a vehicle and you give it to somebody you don't even know. They should come up with their appropriate circles. Number two, they're the ones who employ drivers. Like now, PSV vehicles, you can only drive for eight hours. Beyond eight hours, somebody else must be, so it's an, uh, an employment opportunity. At least each and every PSV vehicle would have a minimum of two drivers. Two drivers. Mm -hmm. So that gives an opportunity. Those people who are out there, the Kama, I don't know what you are calling them. The Kamagiras. The, the, Kamagiras. Mm -hmm. uh, the Kamagiras should ensure that they have, they comply. They have their, uh, their uh, documents in order mm -hmm. so that they can be relieving. For example, I had them say yesterday that uh, they help the drivers when the drivers go to take, take a break. Tea. Yeah, fine. Mm -hmm. But be compliant. If you're not compliant, you have to leave the road. And I can tell you, especially in this past one week or two weeks, we have to push people out of uh, those Kamagiras. Mm -hmm. They just have to be removed from there. And, and, and officers in charge of those areas where we found those Kamagiras, 
And I would say, starting even with Machakos bus stop, we must not see those people there. We only want to see driver and conductor, mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. Any other person, then you have to suffer the consequence. It's so serious. All right. Yes. There, there was a complaint yesterday that in some cases we had uh, people, I, I wouldn't confirm whether they're police officers or not, in civilian clothes uh, conducting this particular uh, arrests and, 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 and going to these PSVs and checking whether everything is okay. Is there anything to that effect that officers police, are now police officers adorned in civilian clothes? Police, police and how will this uh, pre prevent the, the people in, in this particular uh, sector from being taken advantage of or no, by con artists? Police officers know one another mm -hmm. and police officers work within their jurisdictions many a times. Yes, we have police officers in civilian that are following up what the others are doing. Okay. To ensure that the other officers comply. So how do you tell and they the have And they have, um, they have their certificates with them mm -hmm. that they can show you. Uh, but they're not involved in active uh, uh, active arrests okay. in other places. Mm -hmm. But you see, there are cases where conductors and drivers would see a policeman in uniform from mm -hmm. far, and they take off. So, so what is so the solution? So you confirm that we have at yes. least people yes, we deployed have. by the police yes, that we are have. in civilian that are yes, doing this? Yes, that will arrest you. Some are not cons. No, 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 no. They are actually uh, working and doing A policeman has a certificate, okay. of, uh, a certificate that he has, and mm -hmm. equally within that area where you find a civilian policeman coming, you must find a policeman a in uniform. uniform. Okay. The only thing is maybe I want to arrest some mm -hmm. tots. Mm -hmm. Uh, 10 or 5 and when they see a policeman in uniform they'll take off okay yeah so I have to bring in a team that is why in town we have many policemen including CID who are not in uniform yeah. when you go to central police we have the crime branch and the petty crime they don't have uniform mm -hmm. we have what we call SPIV the spy officers in town who stop these people who pick your handbags. You mm -hmm. should be asking yourself, how come they no longer pick our phones as they used to do? Mm -hmm. How come they are not cutting our handbags as they used to do? Mm -hmm. Because we have policemen in civilian, in town, who are patrolling that you cannot see, that would arrest that person that is trying to take your bag. Mm -hmm. and, and that is why there is that improvement security. So even in this system, we may even bring in uh, more, mm -hmm. especially when we want to carry out a specific crackdown. Like, okay. for example, maybe from here, we will go and check what's happening at the bus station. Do we still have the Kamagiras at the bus station and other places, mm -hmm. the impromptus? Mm -hmm. So that we ensure that at least something is not going on. So it's not business as usual. All right. This is yeah. for Kenyans who are worried that probably we could be conned or somebody would come claiming to be a police officer and they are not and they could just harass us for nothing. I want you to give us your final thoughts on this conversation. This was just an update of what is happening and uh, raising a few concerns that, you know, Wanainchi have raised. But I want you to leave this set and talk to a Kenyan who's watching and even the people who are in the public service uh, tra transport business. Talk to that person. What's, what's, what's going to happen going forward? Give them your final words as we bring this to a close. My position is very simple. Yeah. That the people of this country have surrendered their powers in terms of enforcement to ensure that they have security and comfort in all aspects to the state. It is the state which has this power. It is the responsibility of the, tr the state to protect you. And when there is failure in enforcement or in actions, the blame goes to the state. And that is why the state has taken this responsibility mm -hmm. to ensure that we create order on our roads, to ensure that there is more safety. But most importantly is that this, this is a collective responsibility for all of us. Mm -hmm. What we have simply done is that in a normal setup of a society, there's division of labor. That is why you are uh, a presenter in KBC, I'm a policeman. There's a teacher somewhere now supervising exams. There is a driver on the road, there is a farmer. Each and every person doing his duty. But most importantly, we need to come up as a society, as a team, to ensure that we reorganize ourselves in the manner in which we manage our affairs. Mm -hmm. So that the level of impunity that we have had uh, is, com is, is completely taken away. Because this country is so important to us, we are not going to get another country. Life is so important to us, we are not going to get a second life. If we die today, that is the end of it. You will never have that opportunity to live again until maybe Jesus comes back uh, and, uh, and, 
and to something which is a projection. But practically, this life that you have, you will never have it again. It is therefore important that we come together as a society and respect the role of each and every person and play your role as required. If you are uh, a passenger, ensure that you get into a vehicle mm -hmm. that uh, is not full. Uh, ensure that if uh, the driver or the conductor is doing a wrong thing, it's reported or when you reach a roadblock, you report to the police. Accept the, the inconvenience. This is our country. It belongs to all of us. We have a responsibility to move forward as a team. And uh, because of uh, whatever we have seen on the roads and uh, the fact, the interest to have to improve on our road safety, uh, let us support this process. Let mm -hmm. us support the CEO of the country. Let us support our CS. We support our uh, police officers. And we support everyone to ensure that we succeed on road safety and ensure that we have sanity on our roads so that we can move forward as a country. All right. Yes. As, as we prepare for the festive season, a time that has <coughs> been very crucial uh, when it comes to road carnages, should we expect a different picture this time around with this crackdown and these tough measures going forward? Should we expect I think at we least a positive image this time around? Yes, we, we, we need to ex ex expect that. And uh, that is why I've said we cannot have policemen everywhere. We cannot have policemen on the back of each and every driver and tell him don't overtake on a brawl over hill. Take personal responsibility to secure yourself, to secure your neighbor, and ensure that everybody is safe. But on our part as enforcers, we are going to put our best foot forward and ensure that you are safe. All right. Yes. Thank you so much. That is Charles Ovino, uh, the spokesperson of uh, the police. And uh, just an update he was giving us concerning what is happening with the ongoing crackdown on uh, the public service vehicles that have not complied uh, with uh, the road safety rules that have come to be commonly known as the famous Mishuki rules. A lot is going to be happening going forward. A lot of reforms he has shared with us that are happening already at the National Police Service. And uh, we will be following up on this particular story for you just to get to see what is happening in different parts of the country for you to understand more about even your own responsibility as a com commuter and also your responsibility as a matatu owner and a stakeholder in this particular industry going forward. They say that you're the only sane person on the road. So take that and take that responsibility and begin playing your role and you'll see a difference on our roads. My name is Afin Aching Oma. We are taking a short break on the show. My colleague Rama Guko is coming on the other side of the break with uh, a conversation that revolves around matters health. Today our focus is on diabetes. Do stand by for that.